What led to the rise and fall of Telltale Walking Dead games? Hey hey hey! Welcome to my channel everyone, I'm the Global Cherry and we'll discuss this today. Before we begin, subscribe, like the video, and enjoy the show! <coughs> Telltale Games revolutionized interactive storytelling in the gaming industry with their unique episodic choice-driven titles. Founded by Dan Connors, Kevin Bruner, and Troy Molander, Telltale became a pioneer in crafting narratives where player decisions profoundly impact the story. One of their most acclaimed titles, The Walking Dead, masterfully demonstrates how your choices can alter the course of events in a gripping zombie apocalypse. The first season stands out as a masterpiece, captivating fans with its emotional and bittersweet conclusion of Lee's story. Released in 2012, Telltale's The Walking Dead was developed in collaboration with Robert Kirkman, the creator of the iconic comic series and television show of the same name. This partnership ensured that the game stayed true to the heart of the original material while offering players a unique and immersive experience through its well-crafted character characters and intense moral dilemmas. Telltale set a new standard for narrative-driven games that resonate with players to this day. The developers of Telltale's The Walking Dead were given the creative freedom to craft their own narrative with the beloved comic book universe, introducing new characters like Clementine. Clementine quickly became a fan favorite and served as the protagonist for most of the series, thanks to her complex and evolving relationship with Lee. Their bond was both heartwarming and heartbreaking, capturing the emotional depth that players connected with deeply. Telltale's groundbreaking adaptation not only received numerous Game of the Year nominations, but also paved the way for new markets and audiences for choice-driven games of this style. The first episode of The Walking Dead sold over 28 million copies, marking a monumental success for the studio and the gaming industry as a whole. A significant portion of the success can be attributed to the game's emotionally gripping story, which brilliantly capitalized on the source material. Themes of survivors' desperation, the bleakness of a ravaged landscape, and the crushing reality of a grim future were expertly woven into the narrative. Telltale didn't just create a game where player decisions shaped the unfolding story. They crafted an immersive experience that bridged the content gap for Walking Dead fans and delved into darker, more profound themes. Some days I envy the dead. their ability to adapt the grim and depressing world from the comics and TV show gave them a unique direction to create choices that truly mattered. Players weren't just spectators, they were participants in a narrative where every decision carried weight and consequences, making each choice resonate deeply and personally. The cel-shaded graphics in Telltale games gave them an instantly recognizable and unique visual style, allowing even low-spec potato laptops to run them smoothly. While Telltale initially experienced tremendous success with The Walking Dead series due to its emotional depth and character-driven storytelling, the studio eventually encountered challenges that marked a shift in their fortunes. After the groundbreaking success of the first season of The Walking Dead, Telltale's subsequent games began to follow a familiar formula, impactful choices, plot twists, and shock value. Though this formula initially drew players in, it eventually led to a sense of repetition and predictability that detracted from the original magic. The Walking Dead Season 2 tried to recapture the emotional impact of its predecessor by continuing Clementine's journey, this time focusing on her survival. While the season offered intense moments, it struggled to match the impact of Season 1. One of the most challenging decisions players faced in that season was whether to shoot Kenny or look away as he killed Jane. Considering Kenny's character has grown on me, I let him live, but I could see how he's plagued by the same grief and trauma that has taken over him when he lost his son and his wife Katja. Season 2 painted him as a man haunted by his past, but the narrative seems to like recycling his character. 
Adding to the complexity, we see Jane deceive him into believing she let AJ die to prove a point about Kenny's volatile nature. That's a lot of trouble just to prove a vindictive point, underscoring the darker, more cynical themes that season embraced. But it will never be as dark as that scene in season one with the cannibals. What the hell happened to your legs, man? Don't eat dinner. <laughs> Season 3? Well, we don't talk about Season 3. But where did Telltale begin to hit a bump? Riding high on the success of The Walking Dead Season 1, Telltale Games set its sights on acquiring big-name IPs to replicate the acclaim they had achieved. Over the next three years, they released titles like Tales from the Borderlands, Game of Thrones, Minecraft Story Mode, and Batman. However, the rapid expansion and aggressive release schedule soon revealed cracks in their approach. Players began to notice a troubling pattern. Characters in these new games felt like carbon copies from previous titles, generic and uninspired. The unique charm and emotional depth that had set The Walking Dead apart were increasingly absent. This lack of innovation resulted in a decline in game quality, and players quickly grew weary of the repetitive formulas that once captivated them. Financial problems even re-emerged for Telltale, putting the studio under immense pressure to deliver multiple titles in short time frames. Over 300 employees were tasked with churning out games at an unsustainable pace enduring grueling 14 to 18 hour workdays. This relentless push for output over quality created a snowball effect, leading the company into a downward spiral. The consequences were dire. Hundreds of employees lost their jobs overnight as the studio's structure began to collapse under its own weight. The pressure to deliver quantity over quality proved disastrous, with Telltale's creative and financial integrity hanging by a thread. The situation worsened following the release of The Wolf Among Us, when the studio lost two of its most talented writers, Sean Vanneman and Jake Rodkin. These individuals played a significant role in crafting the gripping narrative of The Walking Dead Season 1. Their departure was driven by the unbearable work environment, fostered by co-founder Kevin Bruner. Bruner, in his management role, exercised excessive control over the creative process, nitpicking storylines, character development, and game design. His overbearing style stifled creativity and drove key talent away, further weakening the studio's ability to produce compelling content. As Telltale prioritized output over employee well-being and morale, the quality of their games suffered dramatically. The once promising bad Batman series added more fuel to the fire, causing fans to lose faith in Telltale entirely. The limited room for creative expression, especially with their outdated engine, only exacerbated the problem. In 2017, Kevin Bruner stepped down as CEO, and Pete Hawley took the helm. Tasked with salvaging the sinking ship, Hawley made the difficult decision to lay off 25% of the workforce in his company, hoping to return the company to its small-scale roots. His intention was to refocus on what initially made Telltale great, crafting intimate, character-driven stories with care and attention. Unfortunately, the damage had already been done, and Telltale struggled to recover from the series of missteps and mismanagement that had led to its decline. The studio's fall serves as a cautionary tale about the risks of prioritizing rapid growth over creativity, innovation, and employee well-being. The final season of The Walking Dead faced an uphill battle, struggling to generate the positive response Telltale desperately needed to overcome their challenges. Despite the turbulent circumstances, Skybound Entertainment stepped in to ensure that Clementine's story reached its rightful conclusion. The season delivered a truly impactful experience, with interactive choices that determined how AJ, the child Clementine has been protecting, grow and develop based on your guidance. This dynamic allowed players to feel a profound sense of responsibility for AJ's future Future, making every decision weighty and significant. 
As the season unfolded, it became clear that the loose ends of Clementine's journey were being expertly tied together. The narrative crafted a heartfelt ending, where Clementine finally found a sense of belonging and purpose at Erickson Academy, surrounded by friends who had become family. This resolution offered a sweet and satisfying conclusion to Clementine's story, allowing fans to see her find a place she could truly call home. Despite the ups and downs Telltale faced during the release of the Walking Dead series, I remain hopeful for future games that follow a similar choice-based format. These type of games have a unique appeal, offering players the power to influence the storyline and alter the course of events based on the decisions they make. There's something magical about shaping a narrative with impactful choices that make each playthrough feel personal. Rumors have been circulating about a potential Kenny sequel for The Walking Dead. The game is rumored to take place after you bid farewell to Kenny in Season 2, when you both arrive in Wellington. In this story, Kenny would survive and potentially work towards giving Clementine the life she's been missing. Some speculate that he might encounter the saviors, presenting players with choices that impact his stay with them. Additionally, the sequel might involve interactions with Negan as Kenny searches for Clementine in the Commonwealth. There have also been whispers of a possible Season 5 for The Walking Dead series, though nothing is confirmed. While these are just rumors, the idea of returning to this world excites me and many fans. It would be fascinating to have another game where our choices can shape the story of beloved characters or even change how things unfold. Reflecting on Lee's story, it's clear how impactful it was. His journey involved choices that altered how other characters treated us and influenced the outcome of events. Yet, there were moments when certain outcomes were inevitable. For instance, when Lee is bitten by a walker, whether he cuts off his hand or not, it's too late to save him. Despite Lee's hardships, he taught Clementine how to survive and be strong, shaping her into the person she became. The Walking Dead series showed how people could change for better or worse based on the circumstances they face. I will always remember this series for the emotional connections it created and the lessons it imparted. That is all for today. If you enjoyed the video, please make sure to leave a like, subscribe for more content like this, and comment your thoughts on Telltale's The Walking Dead. Have you played the series before? What is your favorite season? And do you think we should get more choice-based games like these in the future? Thank you for watching, and that's all.